Hello, and thank you for joining us at the award-winning Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit. This man's name is Mike Roth. And Mike, we have right here, it's hard to see because it is almost clear. I'll let you, I'll let you maybe show here, it. Here, uh, maybe I'll... We are the award-winning show this <laughs> week. We are. It is really cool. Proud to announce that we won an excellence award uh, this year. Last year we did win a merit award. We won some things. This one is absolutely more important special than a merit award. It is quite special. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really happy. The uh, Wisconsin Commun Community Media uh, recognized us with an excellence award. Very cool. I feel that's pretty excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I agree. Uh, so, anyway, so we've had a lot of pressure on us today now with this thing sitting here. Yeah, and it's going to sit, ball, it's gonna sit through the entire show. Well, I can't promise that. <laughs> I, I am a ball dropper. All right. <laughs> well, okay. well, let's get started with what we have on the review. On the marquee this week, we have Four films to talk about. Uh, and so the first one, I'm going to let you go ahead and start us off. Oh, the good one. Yes. All right. Well, uh, the first on the marquee, we will go with Ratchet and Clank. If you do not remember this video game from 2002, you must not play video games. It was a huge hit for PlayStation. So they figured... Well, why not 14 years later? We could uh, make a movie. That because pretty, uh, video games always <laughs> translate into great movies. Always. Ask uh, Ubal. <laughs> Every single one of his movies a complete gem. But anyhow, uh, basically what we have is this cat-like creature, kind of last of his kind. Um, he's a mechanic, and he really wants to be part of this league of superheroes that save the galaxy. Um, uh, the problem is, is you know, sometimes villains get in the way of, you know, uh, just... Do they and, ever. And we got one uh, particular villain that wants to uh, just kind of throw a monkey wrench in all the situation, uh, destroy planets, put them all back together, make a utopia, which doesn't quite work out. Um, people who remember the video game remember it being a lot of fun, a lot of emphasis on excitement and guns, lots and lots of guns, including a gun that they highlight in this uh, movie, uh, one that turns things into sheep. It was very high energy. Unfortunately, this does not translate too well to a movie-length feature. What used to be kind of a funny little break in high-action video gaming is now an um, a hour and a half of high intensity screaming and really bad jokes and i mean even though it stayed true to its source material maybe some things should be let alone just video games yeah. and not movies um i do like some of the things i, I like uh the retroness of it it remind me of those great days of playing ratchet and clank um they threw in some um uh, shots of uh, sly cooper uh, if you know the mischievous sure. And uh, we had Daxter from uh, Jackson Daxter's. It was just a little thing, but it made me go, oh, childhood memory or early adulthood <laughs> memories. <laughs> uh, this, what did you think? This movie was rough, man. It was yeah. hard. Look, I have no, uh, I know of Ratchet and Clank, the video game. Yeah. It means nothing to me, though. They're just words that I know from a time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I go into this, and it, it just, there was so much going on that I didn't care about. And I'm like, oh, that's probably something in the game. Mm -hmm. That's probably something. Um, there was so much Phantom Menace imagery in this movie. It yeah. shocked me with the pod racing scenes. and uh, well, The oh, general feel man. of the bad jokes yeah. it felt like it was ripped from George Lewis. It was a little creepy. Um, I like some of the voice actors. You got mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone in there. Yep. That was fun to hear. Yep. John Goodman, one of my all-time favorites, he's in there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Outside of that, not a whole lot there for me. No, this definitely wasn't a good movie. If you are uh, uh, want to reminisce back to Ratchet and Clank, what I suggest is just play Ratchet and Clank. It was <laughs> yeah. a great game. They got emulators out there. You can just play the game. <laughs> they right do. Now. Um, this movie, I think maybe really small kids who need constant screaming and constant jokes. That was another thing. Oh, those are the, the jokes, best kids I have in the theater. I'll tell you what. <laughs> all the jokes felt like it was written by the same guy. Yeah. Everybody had the same kind of bad jokes that I could have sworn I've heard in 80s cartoons, but that was one of the cute things about the video game was it kind of did stuff like that, but it was in bits in between playing video games. It wasn't an hour and a half long of people screaming and giving you bad jokes. Sure. Yeah. Big difference. Huge no, difference. No, thank you. Um, I gave this movie one star, man. Wow. Yeah, not a fan. And I, I took my son to this movie, and he's... He's in the video game generation, uh -huh. and he was uh, bored by it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I, I brought my daughter. She fell asleep, and I had a kid next her. to me who flipped himself upside down and started kicking the back of the seat like a fast. Better thing to do than watch this movie. And, and that's what I, I was so uninterested in the movie. I spent a lot of my time just, just watching at this kid going, who lets their kids do this? <laughs> that kid, I guess. What did you give uh, Ratchet and Clank? I must have gave it an extra half star yep. just because I played the video game. I gave it a 1.5. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, we keep our streak going of great video game movies. <laughs> Speaking of amazing movies, I have mm. the next one on the marquee, and I've got Mother's Day. <laughs> Lucky. Ah, uh, yes, the new movie from director Gary Marshall. And it is basically a murderer's row of rom-com superstar actresses. Mm -hmm. You got your Jennifer Aniston. You got your Kate Hudson. You got your Julia Roberts. And if it's Gary Marshall, Gary Marshall movie, you know you've got Hector Elizondo in it because he's in... Every Gary Marshall movie. I think someone cashed in some favors. but It's what he does. It's what Gary Marshall does is he gets this big cast of characters together, big who's who of Hollywood, and let's try and make a movie based on a holiday, apparently. That's his new shtick. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have Jason Sudeikis, um, Timothy Oliphant, Britt Robertson, and uh, Shay Mitchell. And it is a movie about daughters and mothers and relationships with people, and it's a lot of daughters not talking to moms, a lot of misunderstandings, mm -hmm. a lot of really stilted dialogue, a lot of bumbling dads because dads are so, oh, they're all just a bumbling idiots. And it's just, it's, it's, it felt like an Avengers-style universe of just putting <laughs> together all of these rom-com stars into one thing, and how much of this can you handle? Uh, not very much. <laughs> you could tell when these actors were about to take a fall. And yes, there are a lot of fall you gags. Bet. You, bet. Um, you could tell they're thinking about everything they're doing. They are really just phoning in every bit of dialogue and action. You saw this stuff coming up, and really a lot of the scenes just felt like, oh, that was very predictable that you would have a kid That's dancing in the background after the dad falls right. off the house, and he looks where he's going as he's falling down, like, whoops, where am whoa, I going? Whoa, 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 Here's a funny scene. Need the slide whistle. You know, I don't understand, <laughs> I don't know when Gary Marshall stopped being able to write real people yeah. and make people feel and realize. He made his bones uh, early on in, like, writing what, Real relationships and making like people. Woman? Oh, sure. I mean, that movie had heart. <laughs> sure. It made you care about these characters. You took a hooker and, a, and this guy, and all of a sudden you start caring about him. Yeah. And he was able to craft and write for real people and make dialogue that seemed believable. And this just felt like crazy people in crazy situations that are none of it felt real, impossible situations. And one of the weirdest things to me is so this movie is about Mother's Day. It's supposed to, you would think, yeah. celebrate mothers, celebrate mothers in your life. Everything. And the movie basically made the guys in the movie are all cool. Mm -hmm. They got attractive women throwing themselves at them. And the women are all dramatic and idiots. There just, wasn't a it's single just, good mother. I did not uh, go, oh, wow, this person is someone that I would really like and I'm rooting for. All these mothers were really bad. Yeah, they're all screwed up liars who are super dramatic and mm -hmm. just all messed up. And I'm like, why are all of the dads, like, super cool and the women are all just screwed up? That's, it's so bad. It's, it followed the line of this movie just being full of very familiar tropes of mm -hmm. what you would think, what a guy would think. Like, yeah, I'm going to write a rom-com. Well, it's got to have this, it's got to have that, it's got to have that. Well, then we, we do all that. You know what? This, it kind of felt like a mashup of movies for me. It was kind of a little bit of Batman versus Superman, where you had way too many characters without any backstory, so you really never cared about any of these yeah. people. I mean, there well, are Britt Robertson's character. But Robertson is a nice up-and-coming young actress, and her yeah. character about finding her mom pregnant and whether she should get married that felt so just like we need to have someone who's you know who's, uh, an orphan. We got someone who doesn't want to get married. Mm -hmm. We got somebody pregnant. Well, let's just put it all in one one character. We'll just throw that all. If uh, Gary Marshall concentrated on any one of these stories and actually made the actors care about their roles a little bit, I think you could have had three maybe pleasing movies. Yeah. But none just of these so, people really Everyone cared. in the movie was miserable. A lot yeah. of miserable people in weird situations. The writing. The writing for the teenagers in this movie. You could tell this movie was mm -hmm. written by a bunch of 60-year-old guys who don't know how teenage girls talk. Because there was at one point, there was a uh, soccer game. Yeah. And the girls lost, and they're walking away. I wrote, I had to write this down. And the, this is the dialogue from the teenagers. I can't believe we lost. I think the ball was deflated. Tom Brady's hot. As they're walking away. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's what kids say these days, right? That's how they talk. Well, of course, and all old people don't know technology because, you know, the TV that they um, Skype on, but they didn't call it Skype. They called it something nah. else accidentally because old people don't understand technology at all. Um, it was very cliche. Would you say cliche is the good word? Very cliche. It, it was, there was, and, and at the end it attempted to pull emotion from you in the cheapest ways. You get taps being played mm -hmm. to just, hey, it, we can't get real emotion out of you. We'll just, we'll take whatever we can get. The only emotion I really had was kind of boredom and upset. I felt like someone was trying to make me enjoy this movie instead of showing me a piece of art that I could enjoy. There were cameos and, and uh, small roles in here that I was dying to just give me more of, like, John Lovitz's character. Just give me more John Lovitz. Oh, yeah. As the, the theater guy, the, uh, Larry Miller was one of the cops. I love Larry Miller. Just give me more Larry Miller and less Timothy Oliphant. It, it just, I, I don't know. It did nothing. One of my favorite people was uh, Shay Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably because she didn't have much of a role. Yeah. But out of all the females, she seemed the most grounded and the nicest one. Because they didn't that, have time to screw her up in this. No, I guess not. That, that's, they didn't have time that's to really key. write for her. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever. And, and I also hate how... You know, all these mothers are flawed, and then they had some really lame reasons for yeah. them to have this reveal and this change in their characters so that the plot could feel full. It, these, it was poorly written, poorly acted, poorly directed. <laughs> what do you got going for it? The cinematography looked kind of pale. Like, they really tried with this birthday scene with bu bubbles flying all over the place, and I felt like I see more, I, I see better stuff on our show. <laughs> I really well, do. We're award-winning, we Mike. I mean, we're come award on. We're award-winning. <laughs> Don't short us. We've got and the if award. If you're talking about cinematography. It's all right here. <laughs> See these chairs back there? Um, <laughs> what, what did you give this movie? Um, I gave this a .5. It's runner-up for the worst movie of the year oh, for me. Oh, man. So I didn't hate it that much. I Actually, there was a few moments I had a laugh. I really like J Jason Sudeikis. He's really just a guy that I enjoy watching. Yeah. He's the only one that feels like a guy I could hang out with, a guy I know. I liked him in this as the dad. Um, I'll say this. It's probably the best movie titled Mother's Day that I've seen. Oh, I'm going to wow. say that. Yeah, I'm that's going pretty out bold. There. Yeah, there's a few <laughs> of them out there, but I think this might be the best one. Um, I, yeah, it was, I gave it one and a half stars. Hmm. It's still not good. No. I don't think it's terrible. I hated it. As rom-coms go, it's cliche. <laughs> it's just a blah of rom-coms. And I'm not a hater of rom-coms. I enjoy a lot of them. But this one was just, it felt like an amalgam of just things. Nah. And, uh, yeah. I, I had a, there is, there is a hate. <laughs> All right. There's a hate in there. All right, let's move on to a movie maybe you didn't hate so much. What do you have next on the marquee? Well, I have a very interesting movie. The previews didn't seem like this was going to be great. It's called Keanu. Um, you have uh, Key and Peele. Their comedy team, i really never seen anything by mm. them. But I hear they're huge. Um, they have this uh, movie where um, Peel, he plays Rel. He's this guy who just got dumped by his girl. And a kitten comes up to his, oh. and he falls in love. And he just kind of revolves his world about the cuteness of this kitten. And then uh, then he's gone. The and his, gone. Uh, his cousin, uh, Clarence... Played by uh, Keegan or Key. Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, Keegan Michael Key. Um, he helps him find him. Um, the kitten is uh, abducted by a uh, drug lord, so they have to be all hard and uh, kind of not just drug lords, like. but they have to go into the gang called the Blips. The Blips, which is a mixture of the Bloods and the, the guys who got outcast from the Bloods and Crips <laughs> form their own third party gang. Love it. I this movie is. I went in just going, oh, how, how, whatever. I cried. And yeah. not cried, at, like, I laughed so hard at certain scenes that tears were rolling down my face. I probably looked like a complete idiot back there. <laughs> it's, you know what, it's, it, if you enjoy Key and Peele, their show, this is the same type of comedy because, again, Jordan Peele wrote this as mm -hmm. he does most of the things in Key and Peele. So he wrote with their, their comedic uh, personality in mind. So if you love Key and Peele, you're going to love this movie. It's really well done. Yeah. You know, and you have a lot of great other actors in there. You have Will Forte as the drug dealer across the driveway, yeah. who's really funny. Um, Method Man as Cheddar, the head gangster. Yep, uh, because if your name is Cheddar, yeah. you got to be hard. you got to be hard. <laughs> I really like Jason Mitchell, who we last saw as Eazy e uh -huh. in Straight Outta Compton playing uh, Bud. The other gangster, because because as the, the as they go in, they go in posing as 
some hardcore killers. Yeah. They go into this, the blips looking for Keanu posing as these hardcore killers. And so they got to act hard. And then they're given this other, this group of prospects, basically. Go out and show them how to kill people. I, I like, out of the three um, male gangsters, I think Trunk was my Trunk favorite. Trunk was good. Yeah, he's like, how'd you get your name? Oh, I locked my keys in the <laughs> trunk with a dead body. <laughs> there's so much in this movie. Like, I cannot wait to rewatch it because there's so much going on. And, I mean, the... The kidnapping of Keanu really only serves as like the inciting uh, device to get yeah. the story going. And you've got the running theme throughout, which you would think might get old, of Key's Mike, George Michael obsession. Yeah. And it plays a thread throughout the entire movie, and it doesn't get old at all for me. They do repeat a lot of jokes in yeah, this, yeah. but when they do... It still is funny. Um, also, the sh constant showing of cute kitten doing cute kitten things. Expect a lot of that well, in this movie. The but cute kitten's on the poster. I mean, every it's... single time I see it, I'm like, oh! And I'm not one of those guys that goes through Facebook and sees a cute kitten and just like, Loves I got to repost this. I don't do that. I, I just, <laughs> I like the idea in this crazy comedy. I mean, it does turn into a, a almost like a Liam Neeson movie when the when Keanu's stolen. Mm -hmm. Now it's got to get real. Yep. And it turns into this great. Buddy drama action comedy movie, and you have these two middle aged guys just trying to figure out who they are. Really, yep. who are we? Who do we want to be for the rest of our lives? We should grow up, and you see them kind of start to really enjoy the role that they're playing of being the gangster, being a tough guy. Oh, I got yeah. respect all of a sudden. My wife doesn't even respect me, but in this world, it, it, maybe I don't want to not be these guys. And, and <laughs> I really dug that. I mean, it's it's the two of them together play so well off of each other. And that's what makes their team so funny is they know their strengths and weaknesses and how to play off each other. It's great. I'm definitely going to um, – I'm sorry. I'm kind of lame. Where do I see these guys, uh, their comedy routine? Key and Peele, I believe they're on the Comedy Central. Comedy Central? I watch them on the Hulu. Oh, yeah. you, you <laughs> hit crazy. that. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I like – Anna Ferris shows up playing herself. Mm -hmm. That's the one part of the movie that, to me, felt like it got long. I, they lost me for a few minutes. They're hanging out at Anna Ferris's apartment playing Truth or Dare. Yeah. And it felt like we could have cut five minutes out of this scene very easily. Um, so that's the one part that kind of... But I don't know about you. Wham! I think is having a renaissance. Wham! Oh, has no. never had a bigger year in film than they are this year with Deadpool and with... Keanu, Wham! is big in 2016. No, it's it's tongue-in-cheek. You know that. I don't think it is, you man. Know. Kids are downloading Wham! like left and right. Uh, they they want to know what the inside joke is. Hey, it's all there. Wham no inside joke. Big. They're great music. <laughs> no, it's... Oh, uh, I celebrate their entire catalog. Unfortunately, one of my first two... Uh, yeah, here's a little trivia fact all about right. me. My first two albums, LPs, was Back to the Future and Wham! Made It Big. You know how many times I played Wham! Made It Big? Maybe once. That mm. was it. You still got that? You want to bring it in? No. We'll play it. No, it was given to me. Oh. And I do not have it anymore. Down, but Back to the Future. Downplaying it. Woo! That was awesome. I love hey. that. You bet. You got a ticket to ride this train. That's a good song mm -hmm. right there. Um, I, yeah, I just I don't know what else to say. I love Keanu. If you enjoy... Key and Peele, you're going to love this movie. Go check it out. It's it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, Don't let the description... A uh, lot of really studio. awkward hilarity in there. Um, Key especially plays that awkwardness really well. Oh, uh, yeah. I like watching him a lot. Um, so uh, I, I gave this movie three and a half stars. You want to hear something? Tell me. <laughs> three and a half stars. Man! I, I think if they didn't repeat the that jokes... That means I'm right. Yes, you are right. All I right. think if they didn't repeat the jokes as much and they mm -hmm. had more fresh material, this could have been launched a little higher, even though every time they repeated a joke, it still was hilarious. It was. I, I did want a little bit more. Every time Will, Forte, Will Forte's character showed up on screen, I laughed. Yeah? <laughs> have you been so watching his television show? Outrageous. I have. Last Man on Earth. Yeah, that's hilarious. Pretty good stuff. All right, the last movie we have on the marquee this week is a movie called Green Room uh, from director Jeremy Saulnier. Uh, it is about a punk rock band who is uh, sent out to play a gig Unbeknownst to them, they're playing a gig at a neo-Nazi skinhead bar, basically, hangout. Club. Clubhouse, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you have Anton Yelkin, uh, who's one of the uh, lead members in the band. Uh, Imogen Poots uh, is in the movie. Uh, Aaliyah Shawkat, I love her as Maybe in Arrested Development. She mm -hmm. is also in the band, uh, among a couple other people. And they show up, and they play their gig, 
And then they accidentally stumble in and witness a murder in the back room. Yeah. And quickly, the room is the green room. The, of course, the room, uh, you know, if you're going to perform, the band hangs out in the green room beforehand. It's their place to get quiet and, and be safe and just get ready for the show. And so the murder happens in the green room. They are locked in there by these neo-Nazis. And now it becomes basically a confinement thriller. Mm -hmm. um, as they are trying to figure out what's going on. Can we just go home? What's, can we, we promise we won't see anything. And it steadily evolves. The movie evolves and twists. And, and Patrick Stewart shows up as the head of the neo-Nazis. That is one of my favorite sports. What an amazing Patrick, casting choice. Patrick Stewart, he is known lately for his comedy. No, mostly for his dramatic, X, yeah. Yeah, dramatic roles such as... Uh, uh, Shakespeare sure. and um, Heard of him. yeah, and uh, Star Trek, and we yep, have uh, X Men yep. and stuff like that. Him as a menacing Nazi skinhead is uh, is is powerful. It was great. It, it was lended really a lot of credence to this bad guy when you mm -hmm. could just have fa nameless, faceless skinheads, and to have him really cool, calm, calculated, never raises his voice. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we need to do. Get the dogs. Get the guns. And it, it's this confined space thriller, which I always love. I love these, but you have to do them well. Yeah. Otherwise, they can really fizzle out quick. And I like that it's in that it happens in this space. Like I mentioned, that's meant to be relaxing. The green room is where you're supposed to be safe and relax. Mm -hmm. And it all happens in here. Yeah. And it gets brutal. Mm -hmm. You it, extremely gruesome. I mean, <laughs> the first amount of uh, gruesomeness. Shocked me like I ah uh, no yeah. I, I no got, I still have shivers on my yeah yeah it I mean there's a lot of this movie that I like though there's the mosh pit scene as their first as they're playing mm -hmm. that I thought was just shot beautifully kind of slows down you get this great angle oh, I love, in the mosh pit I love the location too it's down down in a ravine of some sort you you have to drive down this gravel road in between a couple of hills I'm assuming with trees all over the place so you feel isolated like there's only one way in one way out but it's a clubhouse at the same time everybody's on the end it's for the the band it was a beautifully shot the, the interesting thing to me too is like the first 20 minutes is you know they're not there yet they're you're seeing them kind of being the struggling diy type punk band yeah and trying to play this show and it does it fails and they don't make any money and they're they're desperate that's why they take this show yeah and so you do get to kind of feel this dynamic out among the band members and this congeniality they have with each other, but they don't exactly love each other in a lot of times. No. And you, you see them kind of making their way through. And the movie itself, I mean, yeah, there's cell phones and such in the movie, but they're driving like an old 1970s van. The movie feels like it could have been set in the late 70s, early 80s with everything, the punk rock music, mm -hmm. the, the old vehicles, everything in it feels like this could very much be a 1981 thriller. And it, this uh, club actually looks like a lot of bars I've been into Man, before. And the, it's Look, like in 2016, neo-Nazis, still scary. Mm -hmm. Nazis are still making it as the bad guys. I love how the club is, you could tell, it probably was a nice-looking place at one point. Right. But every time a wall gets punched out or something like that, they just put plywood up, which looks terrible. So paint it black and have someone graffiti it. Th yeah. Throw some graffiti <laughs> on it. This movie comes from A24 Studios. Yeah. Who, I mean, if when I see A24 before the movie, all day long I'm excited because they just are churning out hits. Indie films, small movies that you don't always get. They're great. The only complaint I had about this is there was no individuality with the band. I felt like all the characters in the band were pretty much the same character. And hmm. same thing with a lot of the skinheads, too. A lot of them seemed like they were all very, they had calm voices. They seemed like they were very in control, but they have this extremely manic side if they allow themselves to let it go. So... I wanted some more individuality. Patrick Stewart, I think, really stood out. But the rest as a group seemed like this is how this group See, acts. I this liked, is how this I group liked acts. Macon Blair was Gabe, the guy who was like the bumbling uh, servant manager, or ma manager yeah. for the club. Yeah. And I thought that he was really good as you're not sure where he falls in this. He's a skinhead. But he, you can tell he's not in always the good graces of Patrick Stewart. Uh -huh. Like, you idiot, do this. I thought he was a really interesting character. I thought that the guy that was trapped in the green room with them to open with was really interesting. And, it, <laughs> and, and he added a little levity to it. It wasn't constant oppressive 
uh, it, you know, thriller. His actions, um, I thought, was very similar to everybody else. Uh, he wasn't bumbling. He was more in control, like, hey, guys, this is how it's going to be. Let's do it this way, and everything will be fine. Right. And then you had the snap moment, which just made me go, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, so ultimately, what did you give Green Room? I gave it a 3.5. I would have gave this a lot higher if I thought that there was more individuality with the mm. characters, especially in the band. I have three of the white guys that were thin all seemed like the same kind of you've white got guys. The, well, you've got Anton Yelkin, who's the star, and uh -huh. you've got the guy who knows MMA, who's snapping arms. You've got Maybe, and you've got the other guy. Okay, Maybe was separate, but <laughs> right. everybody else acted the same to Fair me. Enough. But Fair enough. go see this movie anyways. If you love horror, this is something you have to see. If you don't love horror, this is something you yeah. have to see, really. I uh, I give it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It's one of the better movies I've seen this year. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was a really effective thriller. And uh, I was totally terrified of these Nazis and what they could do, man. These skinheads. Yeah. Terrifying stuff. Terrifying. So go check out... Green Room. Uh, that leads us into our movie throwback for this week. And I'm thinking about another band who was being chased by a bunch of Nazis, man. Mm. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about Jake and Elwood, the Blues Brothers. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, 1980, the Blues Brothers comes out from director Jonathan Landis, uh, starring, of course, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Mm -hmm. And they are Jake and Elwood. Oh, man, look at that. I just love them right there. And you've got John Candy, you've got Carrie Fisher, and you've got a who's who of musicians from this time period at the height of their powers. Mm -hmm. So many uh, amazing musicians in this movie. You know, they're putting the band back together. We're out of jail. Let's put the band back together. Let's, we got to raise some money to save the orphanage. And the movie is alternately funny and dark and action-packed and musical. So many great iconic musical performances going on. Great quotes. We're on a mission from God. Amazingly yep. quotable movie. And some of the greatest car chase scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> As they are tearing through the mall with the cops behind them, and they are just destroying the mall. Or as they are going underneath Hubbard Street, and they're just destroying everything. I, I, I just, I, this movie is so rewatchable for me. those two guys, they just keep their cool the entire time. Every the coolest time. guys. Yeah. They are, coolest guys in the room. Yeah. Even when the <laughs> cops are busting down the door coming into your gig, mm -hmm. no big deal. Yeah. Just keep playing. Yep. <laughs> um, I mean, I love the musical performances in, in here, you know, with Aretha and Cab Calloway and Ray Charles and the Blues Brothers Band. Um, mm -hmm. Really great. And, you know, this wasn't just, we've seen a lot of actors turned musicians or vice versa and it doesn't quite play these guys they, they work for them and I, I just every time i rewatch this i find new things in it to laugh about and wonder about and you ever want yeah I, I always wonder what would happen if jim belushi didn't die or john sorry john yeah oh jim. if jim belushi would die <laughs> no stop that you're stop listening that. god's ears i'm not saying anything it's <laughs> just saying um so anyways <laughs> go check it out. And, of course, they get chased by Nazis, so that's, uh, yeah, that's our tie-in. Uh, a great chase. Just so much going on. And go watch it on Mother's on. Day. There we go. Throw in another time. I like that. Yeah. Why not? Do it. Why not? Don't watch the other one. So uh, <laughs> let's take a look ahead real quick before we go to the week. What is coming out the weekend of May 13th? We have four movies that will be coming out. The first one is The Darkness, which appears to be about a creepy kid and Kevin Bacon. And there's going to be some scares going on in this house with this creepy kid. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, the next one is Money Monster. Finally, a movie that I've been looking forward to for a while and has been pushed back. Um, directed by Jodie Foster, starring uh, Julia Roberts and George Clooney. This looks good. It, it really does. does yeah. I'm really excited for this. We also have The Lobster. Uh, Colin Farrell, John C. Riley. Really dark, really odd romantic love story. Rachel Weisz. Yeah. Looks really weird, but I'm interested in it. And lastly, High Rise, Tom Hiddleston. Uh, a bunch of strange events in a high-rise building. Kind of reminiscent of Snowpiercer to me. It yeah. looks like Snowpiercer, only in a high-rise instead of a train. Okay. The higher you get to the top, the more prestige you have. That's what we got going on. But uh, that'll be coming out May 13th. Before we leave you, we want to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Thank you for your dream loungers. They are incredible. Uh, and uh, if you want to find more from us, you can always find us on Facebook, Real Reviews TV, or on Twitter, at Real Reviews TV. Follow us there. We're always on there, willing to chat with you. Next week, we're going to be talking about Captain America Civil War. That's going to be great. It's finally here. Uh, but until that time, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.